Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC hobby. Removing these servos is quite easy. Um, the hardest part is uh, getting this wire out. And to do that, you're going to need to take the connector off. So that's quite easy to do if you've never done it. Um, there's three little plastic tabs one, two, and three. And what you do is you take the tip of an X Acto knife and you slide it under one of those at a time and pry it up. And at the same time, just slide the wire out. Do not try to just pull this connector through uh, between the two Ford servos. Uh, you'll just get it locked in place and then you're not going to be able to reach in there and get it out. So do not skip this step. And if you tear up the connector doing what I'm doing right here, you can always get another connector. With that off, out it comes. Then you can reinsert connectors, make sure you have them facing upwards. And to get them fully in, just take the tip of your X-Acto knife and push it into place and yeah I've torn this one up the other one I got off just fine as you can see and all those wires are nice and secure so just bear that in mind you're not going to be using these servos right away anyway but you're gonna have two perfectly good servos for future projects they are just uh, plastic geared micro servos they're not very expensive um, and I would not use them on something mission critical, especially for a larger plane. Um, but uh, I generally try to go with metal geared servos, ball bearings, um, and uh, have something that is as strong and reliable as possible, especially when you're talking things like rudder and stabilizer. Okay, so now I've got those two out, and there's no more issues with uh, clearance for these two lines. I could potentially uh, take out this tray and uh, remount these servos uh, in such a way that I could um, that I could have a longer horn on each one of them. Um, but for the moment, I'm just going to focus, <clears throat> excuse me, on uh, modifying the wing allergies. Um, and uh, another thing that I'm going to do these uh, fuselages. It's just thin fiberglass and you've got a seam right here and you're going to be putting a battery pack in the front. Now, on hard landings, that battery pack is going to be slamming forward. You could put padding in here and I will and you should, but even then it's still going to be applying pressure trying to split that nose. I'm going to mix up uh, a bit of epoxy. Uh, at least a 15 minute or longer epoxy. I may even use uh, JB Weld. And I'm gonna uh, point the fuselage nose down, prop it up on a table, and I'm gonna put enough epoxy in here to fill the tip of the nose probably about a half inch so that there's just a solid chunk there. Now, uh, most people need to put a little bit of nose weight in these kits from what I've read and since I'm going to be mounting two servos into the wing from the fuselage, I'm definitely moving some weight rearward. Uh, so I'll probably need to add weight uh, to the nose regardless. Uh, so adding a little bit of extra weight to the nose in the form of epoxy is not going to be a problem. Plus I can uh, mix that epoxy with micro balloons and that will lighten it up substantially while still keeping it good and strong. 
because what I'm trying to do is make sure that uh, in the event of crashes and or just hard landings that the the battery pack uh, is not going to eventually spread this apart and and bust open the nose so so the fuselage is is done for the moment I'm going to need to drill a couple holes back here I'm not actually not when I say drill it's not going to drill I'm probably going to uh, either use a Dremel with a cutting uh, blade or a router bit and I'm going to cut um, hole a hole or multiple holes for the two aileron leads to come through. Now, the way that will probably go, um, I don't have enough line here to show you both pieces, but uh, there's going to be a piece coming out of the wing right near the wing root. And there'll be an extension that goes to the receiver uh, that will be hanging out of the fuselage. Now, you can't have these wires, you know, binding in between here and the wing surface. Uh, so, what it'll probably end up happening is connecting the male lead to the female of the extension and then sliding that back into the fuselage when the wing is laid down. Uh, when the wing is removed for transportation, pulling it back out and leaving the female piece dangling outside of the fuselage so that it can be uh, retrieved easily uh, the next time for use. So that concludes this video. I'm going to start working on the wing and I'll be covering that for you and uh, we'll see how this build progresses. I definitely think that um, what I'm doing with the wing and remounting those servos or mounting new servos, these servos are, are far too thick uh, this direction to put into the wing. Um, I think it's going to really benefit the airplane. I think it's going to really increase its flight envelope and its uh, potential as far as um, you know having a full flap function. Um, there's a lot of uh, discus launch gliders out there that have all four servos in the fuselage. Most planes I prefer to have uh, the servos in the wing. It's, it's just a simple point of fact that the uh, shorter the connection between the servo and the wing surface, the less likelihood for slop or flex. So if those servos are mounted in the wing with a very short push rod, I'm probably going to use some carbon fiber rod and uh, metal clevises and have a very solid connection with no slack in it. That direct connection is going to make for a much more precise control surface action. This is a different story uh, because of the spring action. Um, because I'm using the Kevlar line, uh, the fact that the Kevlar does not stretch at all, that is going to make for as good a connection as possible to the rear and as precise as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel. If you click the bell icon, you'll receive notifications every time I launch a new video. Thank you for watching.